Yeah, right. It's not yeah, no, the flag. already broke that. Oh, oh really? No, it's, it's glue. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. Well, we We're ready to go. Um, yeah, oh. that's why I, when I, uh, thank you all so much uh, for being here. We are uh, honored to be together to uh, make a historic announcement today about our plans this year around homelessness. Um, uh, we are excited to announce that as a result of the progress we've made over the last year on our efforts on homelessness, as you know, we have now brought more than 1,500 people off the streets and into transitional housing. We know a disproportionate part of the population who is affected by homelessness are veterans. People who have served our country uh, have risked their lives and limbs and often come back and have a hard time finding their way. And one of the most significant ways that they struggle is getting access to housing. But one of the things that we are delighted about is that as we have been successful in moving people off the streets and into housing, we are tracking every single individual that we know is unhoused. And we are also in partnership with the VA tracking uh, individuals who are veterans who are unhoused. That means today we know uh, certainly that we are down to now only 52 veterans left in Denver who are experiencing homelessness, which means we will announce a plan today by the end of this year to make Denver the largest American city to reach functional zero for veterans homelessness. That means we will be the largest American city to make sure that no veteran who has served this country sleeps outside on the streets of Denver. And that is something that we are excited about. Um, uh, and so we uh, have a great partnership with the VA, with our team from HOST, uh, with the VFW and other leaders in the veterans community who are here uh, to make sure we can stand behind this historic promise. Um, uh, but we think this puts us in a position to be able to, before the end of this year, house all 52 of, the, of those veterans who we know who are still experiencing unsheltered homelessness, and more importantly, reach the state that we call functional zero. Functional zero means there are more exits for uh, uh, veterans who are unsheltered into housing each month than there are folks that are currently experiencing homelessness or entering it. So the total number of people coming out of homelessness every month is more than the folks that enter uh, and all the folks that we know of right now uh, are housed. In any major city, uh, the first step to ending unsheltered homelessness for everyone is ending, ending unsheltered homelessness for veterans. We knew that was the first step. We thought it might take years. We are actually well ahead of the pace uh, to accomplish that goal. We're delighted that before the end of this year, we will be able to put an end to unsheltered veterans homelessness here in Denver. So we're here today to talk a little bit more about that partnership and how we accomplish uh, these great steps. Um, as we know, the Biden administration has set an ambitious goal here to reduce veteran homelessness by 25%. We're delighted to be a part of this effort and to be, we think, uh, a beacon of hope for an effort to, to reduce that by 100% uh, this year. We also were honored to share uh, in the designation as one of the all inside cities. Those are seven cities around the country. The White House is recognized as taking aggressive and innovative steps to be able to attack homelessness and meet, th meet these kind of landmarks. Uh, and so this will be a huge step forward uh, in our path to end unsheltered homelessness across the city. Um, well, I have a couple of folks I want to thank who have been critical partners on this and will be critical partners on the road ahead. Um, I'm going to give it over in a minute to uh, Amir Farouki, who is here from the VA, who is going to speak about this effort also. Um, but I want to thank him for their incredible partnership. We want to thank USICH, which has been our uh, partner with the Biden administration, who's been helpful on these efforts all the way through. I want to thank, of course, the Denver Housing Authority and Joaquin, our partner who is here from DHA. Uh, as well as Volunteers of America. Uh, Angel Hurtado, I think, is here somewhere. Thank you so much, uh, Angel. Uh, and also uh, Community Solutions and Melanie Lewis Dickerson, who is here today, who's been a great uh, national partner on these efforts around making sure that we can uh, serve those veterans who, who need our help. And so uh, I want to give it over um, uh, to uh, Jamie Reif, uh, Dr. Jamie Reif, who's the head of HOST, and will be leading this effort for us. Let her say a couple of words about the implementation and the steps going forward. Uh, and thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, Mayor. I'm incredibly excited to be here with you today. I'm Jamie Reif. I'm the Executive Director of HOST and the Chief Housing Officer for the City and County of Denver. There are three main core principles to this. Number one is really the shared goal of ending unsheltered veteran homelessness. And then really close collaboration around that goal. The mayor mentioned all of our partners. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the role each of them serves, but Denver is unique in that we have these people at the table ready, willing, and able, and believing in this goal to end unsheltered veteran homelessness. That group and those partners are dedicated to expanding case conferencing, as well as case management, and other supportive services for our veterans. 
And lastly, and most importantly, we'll be working together to maximize our current housing resources for veterans, as well as make sure that we're bringing new units online so that we can house all veterans experiencing unsheltered homelessness. So I wanna talk a little bit about the commitment that each of these partners has made. First of all, our friends at DHA um, are part of who administer the HUD bash, which is our supportive services um, bash voucher for veterans experiencing homelessness. They're gonna be working with us to make sure we get more and more VASH into the hands of veterans and making sure that that is done in an expedient way. And they are also dedicating housing navigation resources. Right now, we know that of the 52 veterans that the mayor mentioned, 30 of them are in housing search. They have a resource in hand, are looking for a place to live, a unit. DHA will be helping make sure we connect them with those units. Nonprofit partners like Volunteers of America Colorado will be looking across their different real estate portfolios to identify housing resources that they have. They'll also be increasing their housing efforts through their rapid rehousing called SSVF, Supportive Services for Veteran Families, and making sure that we quickly get veterans into housing. Community Solutions is a national partner in this work. They have their largest real estate portfolio investment in the entire country in Denver, totaling five buildings and over 400 units who they're going to be leveraging to make sure that we can house veterans quickly. They'll also be providing access to other system level and flexible resources to support this effort. The Metro Denver Homeless Initiative has been a leader in collaborating on this work and making sure that today we can confidently say that we know we have 52 veterans sleeping outdoors, which is called quality data. And lastly, but not least, as the mayor said, we are designated as an all inside community. That means we have federal support we actually have a staff member who's embedded in the Denver community to help us remove barriers, do things like apply for different waivers, also make sure that we have a direct line to places like HUD and other federal departments, as well as the White House itself, to make sure that we are working together, collaborating to remove those barriers that veterans often experience when they are unhoused. And so with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Amir Faruqi, who is our interim director of this VA Eastern Colorado to talk a little bit more about how the VA will be supporting these efforts. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. So again, my name is Amir Faruqi. I am the interim director at the VA Eastern Colorado Healthcare System. One of the locations that essentially that we are have to help support our veterans is right here. This is our VA Community Resource Referral Center. We've got a number of wonderful staff that work here every single day to make sure that our homeless veterans receive the services, that they receive the support that they need. And so we're very proud of what we're able to make sure that we do working with our community, working with our partners to serve our veterans. Um, a couple of things I want to share with you are some of the successes. Again, it was not easy for us to get to the point where we're at. Um, for us to be able to get to the, you know, approximately 50 or so veterans who, you know, are still unsheltered. There are a lot that, a lot of work that had to occur before that, and that was done with our community partners. Just in the calendar year of 2023, we actually did outreach to, you know, it was mentioned there are certain goals that the administration has put out there. We actually reached 151% of our goal with over 900 veterans outreach, unsheltered veterans who were reached out to, to be able to provide them the support and the services. And that was some of the staff that's here in our crowd, the staff that are inside there right now working with our homeless veterans. In addition to that, um, in terms of housing veterans, there was actually, we, we exceeded that goal as well with over 106 percent of our goal and that means 752 veterans it just in 2023 752 veterans were housed that were previously homeless so that is not done just by va that again is done through the relationships we have with our city partners our state partners all of us coming together and as well as our vso's who provide so much support to us and so we're really proud to be a part of this and to be able to move forward we continue to work closely with the mayor's office uh, as a matter of fact one of the things that we are looking at is how can we expedite expedite the applications that come forward so that, that way we can make sure that our veterans receive that care receive that support receive that housing as quickly as possible and so we're actually looking at the opportunities to do universal applications across the communities not just in denver but across so that we can make sure that it's done as quickly as possible we are very proud to be partners with you know again these organizations as well as the city as well as the state and really appreciate the opportunity that everyone brings to make sure that our homeless veterans that that there should not be any homeless veterans that we reach that functional zero so thank you all for your support and again thank you mayor thank you to all on this team because it truly is a team a partnership effort thank you
In a moment, I'll be happy to take some questions. Uh, I just want to reiterate what we think makes today so historic, which is our fundamental belief and our commitment is that if you have served your country, there is no way that Denver is going to allow you to be stuck sleeping on the streets. What we are going to say is that those veterans who've given everything to this country will make sure they have the housing they need to get their lives back on track in Denver. And that Denver will be the largest American city to be able to end veterans' unsheltered homelessness by reaching functional zero. At the end of 2024, we are now on path to do that. And for those of you that are tracking our long-term work, uh, the audacious belief that we can end unsheltered homelessness for all Denverites starts the belief that we can do it for veterans. Uh, and this is our first step. We're ahead to be ahead of schedule on delivering this ambitious goal and providing our veterans the services they so deeply deserve. So that's why we're glad to be here today. So grateful to the VA for their leadership and partnership. Thank you so much to all our veteran service organizations that are here. Uh, and we are happy to answer questions you may have about this effort. Mayor, quick question. Yes. Alex Edwards, Denver Gazette. Uh, what kind of specific barriers do veterans face when they are homeless that poses a challenge to getting them into permanent housing? And do they need extra support or services as a result of that? Sure. Amir or Jamie, do one of you all want to take that? Sure. So they, our veterans do need support. They do need additional assistance. Um, and, and again, it's not just through us, but through a lot of groups. That's one reason why we are very proud. We've got some wonderful folks in our, who are social workers, who are other clinicians, who actually help provide some of that support. It could be medical needs. Um, it could be, it's, it's not, housing is an important first step, but it's also about really providing those wraparound services, recognizing that someone who's been homeless, especially if someone has been homeless for an extended period of time, their needs are gonna be greater. And so that's where our team really coordinates. They work together, again, working with our partners out in the city, working with other VA clinicians, VA resources, Resources to make sure that they get what they need. Does that help answer? I think it does. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question about, yes. um, you were talking about how the prior efforts weren't justified, others just weren't about how veterans feel homeless. Can you give us a little bit of perspective on what you guys learned about how many veterans were in need of help from the prior efforts to then come up with this 52 number? Yeah, I'll say a minute and then let Jamie jump up for more. Um, I think what we, we have always known that veterans are at greater risk for being homelessness given the trauma that they've experienced. And so we always know that's true of the population. The benefit is we got better and better at tracking the data of who our individuals are that are unhoused. And as we brought these 1,500 people indoors that were previously uh, living on the streets, it's allowed us to both identify the population of folks that are left and the folks that we have that are already inside. And so as the numbers on the streets have gotten smaller and smaller, it's easier for us to focus more and more closely on those remaining who are still veterans and the benefit of our big push to bring 1,500 inside as we now know there are only 52 veterans left that are outdoor on the streets. And that feels like a very solvable number for us to take aggressive action on. So that's a little bit of the story, but I'll let Jamie jump in if you want to add more context. I think the other thing is it's really helped us understand the issue. So one of the things we know is it's really hard to solve something you don't understand. And so as we've moved people indoors, we've been able to engage with them differently. It's also allowed us, we've increased our outreach, our ability to actually be outdoors, interacting with people, building those relationships through the House a Thousand effort. And so that really has brought us in part today to where we are, which is understanding in real time how many veterans are experiencing homelessness outdoors and what their needs are. Sure. Um, yeah, so again, housing and homelessness, right? So we are looking to identify housing resources and using what we're doing right now with veteran homelessness to understand our greater systems, where our gaps are, how we can fill those gaps, and how we can better work together to make sure that we're bringing people indoors, connecting them to safety, and then also identifying housing resources for people experiencing homelessness. Mayor? Yes. Um, so the uh, homeless advocacy group is scheduled to release obviously having that in front of you. Can you broadly speak about how uh, enforcing the city's campaign ban has changed under your administration and how you think it's benefited? Yeah, the uh, you bet. I haven't seen that, but happy to look at it when it comes out. I think what we know is dramatically different is we've focused our entire strategy here on connecting people to housing. Uh, so rather than the old practice of sweeping encampments, which is you take someone from one block and move them to another block, We've tried to resolve encampments. We've tried to close encampments by moving all the people that are in those encampments into housing. 
that was what helped us uh, move more than 1,500 people off the streets into housing. That is why there is no camping or tents left in anywhere of downtown Denver or in the central business district today for the first time in as long as I can remember, is that strategy has worked over and over and over to get people connected to housing. Um, uh, so right now what we're doing is as we identify encampments, we just had a resolution last week where we closed an encampment about 25 people over by the I-25 uh, and Mile High Station. Those people were all moved into housing. So that's, that strategy has worked for us very, very well. We added a lot of units last year, almost 1,000 units. Uh, we're not buying new hotels this year or, or opening. We, op we opened two new micro communities this year, so that's added new capacity. Most of our capacity now for new openings comes from our other long-term goal, which is making sure folks that come off of the streets and into our transitional housing sites are eventually transitioning up into permanent housing. They're up in their own unit uh, uh, supporting themselves or with a voucher. And so as we're moving more and more people out through these sites, that creates more and more openings to bring people in. So that's a, a big part of our focus this year. But we think this strategy has worked, uh, but we also know folks are, are entering homelessness. So as they enter, we want to make more and more beds available. Has the city stayed in contact with uh, the folks that aren't provided housing? I know there's been a couple of, of sweeps where housing wasn't available. So what kind of resources were provided to those folks? Yeah. I think we've only had maybe one or two instances in the last six months where we've had to do that, where we've had to close an encampment either for a health or safety issue without being able to have housing immediately available. Our goal is always to have housing available. One thing that's happened at a number of our sites, which we understand, is now the unhoused community and the advocates around that know how our system works. So as soon as we start engaging in an encampment to resolve it, the word gets out and an encampment of 30 people becomes an encampment of 100 because everyone in town moves in for access to housing. We're trying to partner with those advocates to say, if we come to an encampment with 30 people, it's because we know we have 30 units available. So we're working with them to get them all into housing. If that grows to 100 people over seven days, we can't house all 100 with those available units. So we're in better partnership with the advocates and the unhoused community to say, we're targeting sites based on the number of units we have and working with them directly. In cases where we don't have housing immediately for people, we do get their information, be able to stay in touch, get them on a list. So when we have units that come available, we know how to contact them. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, that is a great question, uh, which I don't know that I have the number off the top of my head. Uh, I will get that back to you. We know, um, as we've gathered data on all the folks that have arrived, um, uh, different partners have different ways of gathering that data. We want to integrate it all. And so uh, I asked that same question this morning, so let me get it back to you today. Okay. Yeah. Yes, um, Joe. Just to put a bow on it, so the approach here is going to be housing first, the same as kind of as the big picture for all house 1,000. Like, can you reiterate how you're going to get these 52 people into housing by the yeah, thank you, Joe. Yeah, so the, the entire focus is just that. It's focusing on housing units where we can get veterans who are currently on the streets, off the streets and into housing. And there we can offer the wraparound services that the VA brings in such a powerful way that DHA helps us with. So we have additional federal benefits that come because you are a veteran that makes it even more possible for us to move more quickly to get them into housing and to get them wraparound services. Um, but the strategy is exactly the same. That's why uh, the veterans strategy is a subcomponent of the broader strategy. Same idea, get people off the streets, get them into housing, get them wraparound services, move them up to permanent housing. It's just a smaller part of the population and it's one for which we have additionally good data and we have additionally great wraparound services. So it's often the first one we can get our arms around. We're excited to be ahead of schedule to do that this year. Do we have time for one more question? Guys? Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious what the scope of the housed, or not the housed, I'm sorry, the sheltered veteran population is right now and then in terms of thinking about housing those folks, like yep. what's the scale we're talking about? Uh, for those that are currently in congregate shelters around the city? Yeah. Um, I will have to defer to an expert that might know that. Let me let sure. Mayor come up and talk about that. I'm sorry, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me right now, but as I mentioned earlier, um, just last year, again, of those who were pre sh from sheltered to housing, there were around 752 just in 2023. Um, again, that was about 106% of our goal already for 2024. I believe uh, we've already accomplished about 55% of our goals. So um, while I don't have the number on the exact number of veterans that is off, uh, off the top of my head, uh, we can always get that to you if you'd like. I'd love that. I do have it. Oh, oh like. perfect. <laughs> yeah, currently we have 230 veterans that are in congregate shelter. Okay, great. And then the 700 number is, where is that from? Is that Denver? Is that that's, uh That's through VA. But how, what, what nationally? Is that, oh, that, is that the whole um, metro area? Is that? I believe, let me say, let me, I'm going to phone a friend. Ms. Powers, or can y'all correct me? I believe it's uh, overall for Eastern Colorado healthcare system. So that includes Denver, Colorado Springs, Pueblo, um, as well as some of our outlying areas. Um, but Kyle, I think you hit on exactly the theory here, which is we're starting by focusing on folks that are, you know, I always say that housing is a ladder. 
and you start by people that are literally on the ground without access to the first rung on that ladder, folks that are unsheltered. Our first hope is to get them off of the ground and then onto the first rung of either transitional housing or congregate shelter. Once we've gotten everyone up to that rung, now we want to move everyone up into permanent housing of their own, which would be the next step. Um, and this is about both first getting the entire veterans population to that safe, stable first rung, and then getting the rest of the entire unhoused population to that safe, stable first rung. But then all of our focus around affordable housing citywide is making sure we have the units both for these folks that were previously homeless, but also for teachers and nurses and firefighters and servers and seniors who also are housing insecure and facing affordable housing challenges. So you'll see a big part of our focus this year and in the years ahead being on increasing the volume of those future rungs of the ladder, knowing this is just the first step. And today I was looking at the general dashboard and it looks like of the people who've exited um, the hotels, the micro communities, yeah. that something like 70 percent have, by my count, have either bad outcomes or uncertain outcomes, like 41 people not being tracked. More than 100 or yeah. homeless people died, yeah. some are in jail. How do we not repeat that same yeah. exit Great strategy? question. Uh, I think the key first data point is I think we're at 90% of all of our folks who have come inside that are still in our all-in program. So the key is 90% of those 1,500 are still housed, which is still well above the national benchmark for an, an at-risk population. Uh, so that's great. But you're right. Among the 10% that have exited, some of those... Uh, we often, whenever we don't know, we assume it's a bad outcome because we want to just be conservative in our approach. So if someone just walks off, we don't know if they went to live with their cousin or got a job or went home to Mississippi. Um, we just assume it's a bad exit unless we have information. And sometimes people don't check out with us on the way out the door. But um, so we're being extra cautious about that. But you're exactly right. Our big focus here, which Jamie described, is on case management at these sites. How do we make sure folks that arrive are getting all the support they need, whether it's around addiction support, whether it's around mental health, whether it's around getting an ID or getting critical papers or getting job training skills, getting long-term housing navigation. That is our entire focus to keep that number high and push it higher. And I'll say again, our second focus is not just that they reach those outcomes, but how fast we reach those outcomes. I'll give you an example. We have a thousand units of housing right now. If we can move everyone out in six months, we can bring 2000 people off the street every year. If we can move everyone up into permanent housing in three months, we can pull 4,000 people off the street every year. And so the biggest driver for our success now is that ability to lead really high quality case management that gets people to successful outcomes. And that's what Jamie and her team are deeply focused on right now. Mayor, sorry, one last question. Do you have any reaction to President Biden's uh, proposed temporary border seal and any impact to Denver you foresee? Uh, I must confess I have not read it. I just saw the news alert on my phone the same way that you have, so I need to read it first <laughs> to understand what has happened. Um, but I will certainly have an opinion after I read it. I just haven't done that yet. Thank you, folks. Thanks so much for having us. Um, and thank you so much to all the leaders of the VFW and the veteran service organizations who are here American for their incredible work. And to the American Legion, thank you so much for their leadership. Should we do a photo together? Can we